Despite innocent beginnings as a research and public health agency, Unit 731 eventually grew into an assembly line for weaponized diseases that, if fully deployed, could have killed everyone on Earth several times over. All this progress was, of course, built on the limitless suffering of human prisoners who were held as test subjects and walking disease incubators until Unit 731 disbanded at the end of the war. In a long list of atrocities, these three programs in particular stand out in the bloody history of Unit 731. Yoshimura Hizato, a sociologist assigned to Unit 731, took a special interest in hypothermia. Hizato routinely submerged prisoners' limbs in a tub of water filled with ice and had them held until an arm or leg had frozen solid and a coat of ice had formed over the skin. According to one eyewitness account, the limbs made a sound like a plank of wood when struck with a cane. Hizato then tried different methods of rapid rewarming of the frozen appendage. Sometimes he did this by dousing the limb with hot water, sometimes by holding it close to an open fire and other times by leaving the subject untreated overnight to see how long it would take for the person's own blood to thaw it out. The effectiveness of various weapons was of obvious interest to the Japanese army. To determine effectiveness, Unit 731 herded prisoners together on a firing range and blasted them from varying ranges by multiple Japanese weapons. These weapons would consist of the Nambu 8mm pistol, bolt action rifles, machine guns and even grenades. Wound patterns and penetration depths were then compared on the bodies of the dead and dying inmates. Bayonets, swords and knives were also studied in this way, though the prisoners were usually bound for these tests. Flamethrowers were also tested on both covered and exposed skin. In addition, gas chambers were set up at unit facilities and test subjects exposed to nerve gas and blister agents. Heavy objects were dropped onto bound prisoners to study crush injuries. Subjects were locked up and deprived of food and water to learn how long humans could survive without them. In some cases, victims were only allowed to drink seawater or were given injections of mismatched human or animal blood to study transfusions and the clotting process. Meanwhile, prolonged X-ray exposure sterilized and killed thousands of research participants, as well as inflicting horrible burns when the emitting plates were miscalibrated or held too close to the subject's nipples, genitals or faces. To study the effects of high G-forces on pilots and falling paratroopers, Unit 731 personnel loaded human beings into large centrifuges and spun them at higher and higher speeds. They did this until they lost consciousness and slash or died, which usually happened around 10 to 15 Gs, though younger children showed a lower tolerance for acceleration forces. Disease has been a bane of organized militaries since ancient Egypt, and so it stands the reason that the Japanese military would take interest in the symptoms and treatment of syphilis. To learn what they needed to know, 
Doctors assigned to Unit 731 infected prisoners with the disease and withheld treatment to observe the uninterrupted course of the illness. A contemporary treatment, a primitive chemotherapy agent called salvarsan, was sometimes administered over a period of months to observe the side effects, however. To ensure effective transmission of the disease, syphilitic male prisoners were ordered to rape both female and male fellow prisoners, who would then be monitored to observe the onset of the disease. If the first exposure failed to establish infection, more rapes would be arranged until it did. In August 1945, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki had both been bombed, the Soviet army had invaded Manchuria and utterly annihilated the Japanese army. After the Emperor read his infamous surrender declaration over the radio, Unit 731 was officially disbanded. Its records were mostly burned, destroying any useful information the team had managed to generate in 13 years of research. Researchers mostly slipped back into civilian life in occupied Japan as if nothing had ever happened, many of them becoming prominent members of university faculty.